In this movie, we'll go ahead and do the final tune-ups to the eye. Make sure it's just right, because if we're going to spend the time to duplicate this, why duplicate it and then have to change things on both eyes? So we'll do it on one eye first. Additionally, there's some layer maintenance we need to do prior to duplicating that eye to make sure that the animation features we want to use are as easy to use as possible. With a quick render, We'll take a look. We've got this nice shadow we dropped in at the last bit of the movie. We need to change the eyebrow. I want that to be actually black. It'll show up a little bit better for dramatic purposes. Not convinced I like the thick and thin on this eye yet. I'm going to play with that just a touch. And this darkness around this eye is almost too much. And it's because of this eyeball area. We ran a thin line all the way around this shape using the shadow function on the entire eye layer excluding the eyebrow. So we'll need to dial this back just a little bit. I'll go ahead and pull that off to the side so I can reference it while I'm making these changes and then pull it in for comparison. Let's go ahead and come down to our eyeball. We know already that that was just a little bit thick. So we've got a couple ways we can deal with the thickness on this. One is to simply grab our handy little tool over here for line width keyboard shortcut W. And with all those selected I can go ahead and drag and make them a little more narrow if I want. That looks good. I'm going to select specific points instead right now. I'll click off that and maybe make this one down here at the base just a little bit thicker. Keyboard shortcut W. And now I'll thicken that up. On the eyeball itself, we'll come up to the pupil level right here. Keyboard shortcut G so I can do a direct selection on this. That's too thick for me. W, I'm going to go ahead and reduce that a little bit. But up here at the top I actually do want it thicker. So I'll select this point, go back to W, and make that one a little bit larger. Finally I'll come up to the eyebrow layer. I'll select that, the shape for that, keyboard shortcut Q, and I simply want to fill that with black. And choose OK. I can go ahead and adjust some of these lines. One thing I wanted to double check is as long as we're making an eye lid to come down over the eye, I want to make sure that there is enough room to actually cover the whole eye. So let me back out just a little bit so we can see more of our frog character. On the eyelid layer itself, I'll activate that. It doesn't look like there is. If I want the frog to be able to close his eyes all the way, this actually has to be a pretty tall shape. Keyboard shortcut G lets me do a select on this one point right up here. T for translate. And I can go ahead and move this up rather significantly. It doesn't need to be quite as wide as this. Although when I want to skewer or skew the eye like that with a point, really easy to do that way. So now coming back to the eyelid layer, let's do a quick render. See how this is shaping up. That's looking a little bit better, not quite so weighty around the eye right here, and we get that kind of cool shadow effect from the hidden eyelid itself. The next thing now is to do some layer maintenance prior to duplicating these shapes to save ourselves some time later on. Go ahead and close this. The layer maintenance I'm talking about is the point of reference for each layer. By default, it's always in the center of your workspace right down here. It's kind of faint to see right now, but it's those two light red arrows that always crop up in the middle. We're going to reposition that based on our work right here. For the eyeball layer, I'll come over here and grab the Set Origin tool. And I'll simply click that right in the middle of the eyeball so that it's always right in the middle. I know exactly where it is for rotation and all those types of important things that we can animate. For the pupil set, I'll do the exact same thing. Click in the middle of it. For the eyelid, I'm going to go ahead and actually click down in the middle of the eye so that everything that this does, the eyelid itself, is based around the center of the layer. For the eyelid and eye, everything together, I'll double click, or not double click, I'll click right in the center of the eye. So there looks like there's a lot of replication of effort right here and there is but it's so that each one of these layers itself behaves as expected when we start using skew functions and those types of tools that pay attention to where the center of the layer is it gives you much more predictable results for the eyebrow itself 
going to go ahead and come down to the middle of the eye for that as well. So now everything is pretty much based around the center of the eye. If I scroll up in my layers palette over here, the last thing that I want to do for the entire right eye is click right in the middle. And for the two eyes, we're going to leave that at the center of the work area right now. I'm not going to move that. I'll close up the right eye. We'll do a quick render to make sure we're happy with everything as we start. There we go. Looks pretty solid. Let's go ahead and duplicate this layer. It's selected. I'll come up to the Duplicate Layer option. Selected. Now we've got right eye too. Well, let's go ahead and open that. We will change this instead to left eye. And choose OK. With that done, I can come to my Layer Move tool. I've activated that, keyboard shortcut 1, and I can simply drag the left eye over here. I can grab the Rotate tool, rotate that a little bit, and obviously I can tune up the eyebrows, but I won't take your time to do that. I can change the size of it now, back down to 1. If I didn't want to do the whole thing there, let me do Undo. I'll disclose that. I want the eyeball and pupil and eyelid. Well, maybe not the pupil so much, but the eyeball itself. So with that selected, now I can use my scale tool and change the shape of that. Back to one, I can reposition that a little bit. And there's the power of working with layers in your set. So now we've got completely unique looking eyes. When we do a render, We've got some nice stuff going on. Since I repositioned that, we lost an eyebrow, but that's part of our frog's quirky character. In our next movie, we'll take a look at creating some of the base layers for the other objects in our scene.